The plants available to the termite team are similar to the ones available for the ants team, except they have uh, slightly different functions and infinitely much harder to pronounce names. The uh, agrius is the resource plant for the termites, and the hygrocube, which I've not remotely pronounced correctly, is the upgrade plant for them. You see that here, and the two resources, and we have an upgrade mushroom right over here. Its base is actually at the bottom of that lake right there. We also have their main shooter plant, which is the gastrum. It shoots spores that travel at kind of an arc, makes them look like artillery, and when it hits the ground, it explodes in an area of effect damage. It's a quite effective weapon, especially in groups. We have the termite healing plant, the reishi. It's a mushroom. Uh, this one will automatically heal nearby structures. However, to heal uh, friendly termites, you actually have to go up to the plant, uh, use weapon one for your jaw, and attack it to eat some of the mushrooms. You won't damage the mushroom, and it never runs out, but you do actually have to hit it to heal from it. The other two plants we have available for the termites team are what really sets them apart. We have the uh, magic mushroom. That is not a joke. It's the magic mushroom. Uh, it is uh, similar to the another ant one. It uh, confuses um, enemies that come near it. It damages uh, um, the enemies. It does uh, more damage than the comparable ant plant when it's near them. Uh, the Copernus is this mushroom right here. This one is particularly effective. It shoots a root that comes out of enemies when they're nearby, and it freezes them in place for a few moments. It is incredibly effective uh, when accompanied by Gaestrum, as it keeps them still for the Gaestrum to bombard the still enemy. Building tips for termites. Um, most of the general rules uh, for ants apply to uh, the termites. Um, obviously, putting shooter plants uh, nearby healing plants is always effective. It's a little more difficult with the termites because of their healing plants' uh, high profile. It's very hard to fit uh, in comparison to the aloe. It does feel like the race is a little bit better at killing structures than the aloe, though. Um, I'm not exactly sure that's just a personal observation. The um, copperness is great, great to put with any kind of termite uh, defensive formation. And the great thing about it is, is its attack travels through the ground. So there's a big area effect around it. You don't need to put it where it can be shot because it doesn't directly shoot. It has a completely indirect line of fire. It's a uh, great for freezing enemy attackers in their tracks. Uh, the magic mushroom is also, of course, great to accompany. Um, but, but your copperness and your gastrum is uh, some of your most effective uh, buildings for the termites. When you have enough upgrade towers, advanced classes will appear on your spawn screen. You'll know they're available when they're no longer grayed out and they're fully colored. When you pick an advanced class, you're going to have to spend resources to gain it, unlike the regular soldier and builder. Also, your gestation time is generally longer as one of these advanced classes. Take care with these and remember to uh, heal them so you don't have to spend resources to gain the class again. Spawning a queen is a very useful thing you can do in an insect infestation map uh, that can really give you an edge on the other team. You can only have three queens ever in a map. If you spawn a queen, the main purpose of it is to make a spawn point for your units to go to. Um, it is has about, as you can see, 3,000 hit points, but it only has a jaw and the hit points in the jar are going to be weakened, so it's not really an attack unit. You really only want to spawn this if you plan to make a spawn point. Um, if you're not sure where to put the spawn point, or 
you're not really used to doing this, you really shouldn't spawn a queen, as you only have a limited number of them. And they cost 100 resources, and it's just a very important asset to your team that these be placed in the right location for you to win. Of course, weapon one is the jaw, number five is the physics jaw, but the special thing about the queen is weapon two, the spawn. As you can see this window I have in front of me, it tells me if I can make a spawn point. Uh, to spawn the queen, all I have to do is move her to an arrow where the queen herself is colored and not red, and all the arrows are white. Uh, this generally means I need to find a location where it's level in comparison to the queen, and there are no buildings blocking my path. Alright, so let's say we wanted to get our soldiers all the way to the other side of the map. What we do is we position our queen about where we want her, and as you can see, your facing really does affect the arrows on the queen, so you're going to have to get to location, spin, move, and all sorts of obnoxious, uh, obnoxious things. Really trying to place the queen is about as fun as having a root canal. Uh, but once you have everything lit up, you hit your fire button, which usually mounts one, uh, you're eliminated, and the queen becomes a new spawn point. You just click on it, or hit the number when you spawn, and you instantly spawn over there, halfway across the map, and this influx of troops will really, really help you win maps. The Domination map works very similar to the basic insect infestation game. The map, as you can see, is divided into several control points. Uh, the ant control points are shown in green, the termites in red, and neutral points are shown in gray. When you capture a point, it will automatically grow a resource and one defense plant. Once you have done this and captured a point, resources will automatically be harvested from that point. Therefore, the more points you have, the more resources you'll have access to. To capture a point in domination, it works very similar to Day of Defeat. You have to go to the point on the map where it is. As you can see, we have a, a firefly orbiting it. Um, every point has a firefly over it. The firefly turns the color of the team that owns the point. To capture the point, we go under the firefly, and this little icon appears. If there's any enemies in that area, it halts the capture, and you have to eliminate them before you can capture the point. Uh, once the point is held for long enough, it will change to your team's color when the bar is full. Full, a queen appears, and the requisite resource plant and one defense plant is done. Additionally, on domination maps, you cannot build resource buildings because you gain them through controlling points or upgrade towers. Since you have neither of these, you don't need pheromones either, and you can't lay them, and all resources are gathered automatically. You can, however, still build your other different various plants um, wherever you can fit them. Since there are no upgrade towers, you can get an advanced class as soon as you have enough resources to spawn it. However, you can't spawn any queens as you gain queens by controlling the enemy points. Once your team controls all of the points, you win the domination map.